Chevy trucks are the most dependable, longest lasting trucks in the North Country. Check out our vans, pickups, and brand new S Blazer models at Bill McBride Chevrolet. Can we ask you a personal question? Does your mouth feel really clean? Compared to what? What do you mean, really clean? Does your mouth feel baking soda clean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> not as confident as you thought, huh? Then you want the fresh, clean feeling of baking soda combined with proven germ-killing power. Introducing Baking Soda Scope. Clean feeling, great taste, fresh breath. It's a whole new way to feel kissably clean. Introducing Clean Mint Baking Soda Scope. Tonight, tourism hurting, and our hands are tied. Warnings on rabies, now a child is attacked. And the jazz fantasy camp, rubbing elbows with the pros, next. Live from WPTZ, Aaron Clark, Stuart Ledbetter, and the Channel 5 News team, this is News 5. Good evening. A sizable chunk of the region is facing an economic crisis that many business leaders say overshadows even the closure of the Plattsburgh Air Force Base. It is the sharp decline in Canadian visitors this year in a region that depends heavily on tourism for jobs. News 5's Kate Shermer reports the news isn't good. The welcome flag is flying, but Canadians aren't packing Plattsburgh parking lots like they used to. The city says traffic at the beach is down 40% from last summer. The weather's been fine. Business people say the Canadians are staying away simply because their dollar doesn't buy enough here. It's not just local. Uh, they're not in Maine. They're not in New England. They're not in Vermont. Uh, they're not in the Adirondacks. Where they are is at home. They're in Nova Scotia. They're in Prince Edward Island. Uh, they're, they're staying in Canada where their dollar has, has the spending power. Few businesses have been able to escape. The Clinton County Chamber of Commerce says retailing is off at least 15%. A number of hotel managers in Plattsburgh call it the worst summer they've ever seen, with business down an average of 20%. The restaurant business has been erratic. A few are up, some are down as much as 30%. Ferry traffic on Lake Champlain, down 14%. The Cumberland Bay campground is off 50% from last year. A survey of Vermont campgrounds found business down an average of 20%. And marinas on both sides of Lake Champlain also down around 20%. These last two weeks of July are generally very heavy uh, Canadian traffic. A lot of transients come in uh, for a night or two of dockage. Uh, we have seen maybe 10% of what we usually see. What we have to realize is that this is probably here for a fairly prolonged period this time. I and mean, there was a point back in 1986-87 uh, when, it, when it actually went higher than this and it actually touched on 40%. But it was a peak and it ran back down and then went right back down to golden times when we had good exchange rates. It isn't, we can see that isn't happening. For now, many places are increasing their marketing, offering special deals and packages. But there's one thing they can't do anything about. That's the exchange rate. It's still the deciding factor for many Canadian visitors, and business leaders don't expect it to improve significantly for at least a year. Kate Shermer, News 5, Plattsburgh. Rebecca Durenlo will not be allowed to leave her jail cell to attend her daughter's wedding. The Franklin County, Vermont woman has been serving a 35 years to life sentence for conspiring to have her husband, Michael, killed nine years ago. Yesterday, her lawyer filed a motion to have her released from prison for two hours next month to watch her daughter get married. Today, Chittenden Superior Court Judge Matthew Katz denied that request, saying in part, release here would cheapen the jury verdict, the sentence, and the particular loss occasioned by this crime. The case that shocked Western New York went to trial today. A 14-year-old boy is accused of killing a 4-year-old. Prosecutors say Eric Smith beat the youngster to death last August. Defense lawyers say they will argue Smith is not responsible for the killing because of a mental defect. The trial is expected to last three to four weeks. The flower planters along downtown Plattsburgh streets are obviously intended to be beautiful, but now some say it's time they go. Turns out the planters on Margaret Street, at least, have become a place for young kids to gather and sometimes sell drugs. So some city councilors want the Public Works Department to level the planters and fill them in with cement. Not everyone agrees. The Republican counselor says getting rid of the planters will solve nothing. I don't think people out partying need to be 
sitting and gathering around and doing drug dealing in front of different businesses. The businesses are trying to survive downtown, and we need to do everything in our uh, capabilities to clean up the downtown. I don't think the answer is removing planners. I don't think taking planners out is going to do away with drug dealing. Well, the city council c considers this potential flower planter drug trafficking connection at their meeting tonight. John Ewing, the president of the Bank of Vermont, says he'll retire this winter once the bank is sold to Key Corp. Ewing has been with the Bank of Vermont more than 20 years, its president the last four. Ewing is also a member of Governor Dean's Council of Economic Advisors and the State Environmental Board. Hydro-Quebec may be hampered by its own research when it tries to win permits for the major power project known as the Great Whale Project in northern Quebec. Hydro-Quebec conducted a massive study of the project and then brought in six Canadian and U.S. researchers to review and analyze the study. The researchers found that for the most part, Hydro-Quebec's study was accurate, except in one key area, and it is notable. The scientists found that Hydro-Quebec had seriously underestimated the impact of Great Whale on the Cree Indian culture. Since the project was proposed, the Cree have consistently said it will destroy their way of life. Two consumer groups say the Vermont Agriculture Department is dragging its feet on a new labeling law. The law requiring labels on all products coming from cows treated with the growth hormone went into effect June 15th, but can't be implemented until the Ag Department comes up with certain rules. The Vermont Public Interest Research Group and Rural Vermont are demanding an explanation for why that's taking so long. Both groups have filed formal written requests for more information and want a response by midweek. New York's unemployment rate was up in June, but officials say it was still the best June in four years. They blame the rising jobless rate from May to June on an influx of students seeking summer work. Well, here at home, the unemployment rate remains above the statewide average. Essex County improved a little May to June. Franklin and Clinton counties did not. Albany had the lowest rate in the state, 5.2%. More definite news from Senator Moynihan tonight that the Plattsburgh Air Force Base Hospital will stay open for an extra five months after the rest of the base closes. That is important, of course, to the hundreds of military retirees in both our states who use the hospital for health care. The Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense today set aside $3 million to keep the hospital open at least until September of 1995. The military is bringing its new managed care uh, system called TRICARE to Plattsburgh, but that won't be in place in time. This does two things. Number one, the beneficiaries can have a good transition into that type of managed health care, but at the same time, we're going to try to make sure there's a permanent veterans and beneficiaries health facility during that one year. We're hoping that we can get it up and going. Senator Moynihan says Congress will address the long-term fate of the hospital in the new appropriations bill next summer. He says he'll try to keep the retirees' benefits at the base for another year if need be. Congressional hearings on the Whitewater scandal got underway in Washington today. Whitewater is a controversial land deal President and Mrs. Clinton invested in in Arkansas years ago. Today, White House counsel Lloyd Cutler testified, and he likened the hearings to the McCarthy witch hunts of the 50s. Vermont Congressman Bernie Sanders, who is a member of the committee holding the hearings, says the hearings will examine only events that took place after the Clintons arrived in Washington. There has been a heck of a lot of poor judgment. Uh, the Clinton administration has made at least 40 contacts with the RTC, uh, with the Treasury Department, and what we're looking at today is, is really what that means. Uh, it's rather unusual to uh, say to an investigatory committee that indeed you can't go into certain areas. I understand the need to remain focused, but uh, I'm concerned that when the uh, final product is produced that the American public will say, yes, but you weren't allowed or you did not go into this area or that. GOP lawmakers claim administration officials have misled the public about White House contacts with federal regulators. Those regulators were investigating the Arkansas Savings and Loan involved in the Whitewater deal. Well, still ahead in our news tonight, private citizens buying part of the infamous Huntington Gorge. And a 10-year-old boy out for a swim is attacked by what may have been a rabid beaver. We'll be back. News 5 is also broadcast live on great radio stations like 1390 WKDR Burlington, 1490 WICY Malone, and in the Tri-Lakes on Z102 FM.
Mr. Chairman, I'm not here merely to remind you that Lincoln Mercury dealers are selling more cars than you are. I'm here to blame you. Maybe if you made quality cars like Lincoln Mercury, mm. we'd be able to match their summer deals. Right, guys? The Lincoln Mercury Summer Sales Drive is on now, featuring the VA-powered rear-wheel drive Mercury Grand Marquis. Just ranked best model in its price class in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Any more questions? See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Pecani salt. This ain't paste pecani salt. Looky here, you got the lunch police. The paste has a spicy, bold taste that livens up any dish, and it's made by folks in San Antonio. Well, this stuff's made in New York City. New York City? Darling, we just gonna have to shut you down. Spice up all your foods. Pick up the paste. Question, name Motor Trend's 94 truck of the year. What truck offers overall the most powerful lineup of engines on the planet and is only at your Dodge dealer? Answer, Dodge Ram. Now get to work. For all the answers, see your nearest Dodge dealer. Question. Name the only mid-size club cab with an available V8, more total room than Ranger and S10, and is only at your Dodge dealer? Answer, Dodge Dakota. A little bigger, a lot better. For all the answers, see your nearest Dodge dealer. In Montpelier, when talk turns to House Speaker Ralph Wright, you'll usually get strong reaction. Whether you love him or hate him, Ralph's power is legendary. He's controlled the House for a decade, but for how much longer? One of Wright's own assistants now says it's time Wright goes, that he's actually hurting the state. Assistant Democratic leader Peter Mallory says he will challenge Wright for Speaker this January. Mallory says Wright is the best street fighter Vermont's ever seen, but that Wright's political baggage keeps bills from moving through the legislature. It has contributed mightily to an erosion of fairness, openness, and civility in the legislative branch of government. Vermont State House is no longer a meeting place for representatives of differing views. It is a battleground. Of course, Mallory and Wright must first win re-election in their districts this November to face off for Speaker. Wright is the longest-serving Speaker of the Vermont House, but in a News 5 Rutland Herald poll last month, most voters rated him as fair or poor. We were unable to reach Speaker Wright today for reaction. Well, New York is one of the few states which now require human rights education in public schools. Governor Cuomo has signed a law that says schools must include subjects like slavery and the Holocaust, in history courses. One educator says teaching kids about those subjects promotes cultural understanding. The more we are aware, the more we understand, the less likely we are to make some of the mistakes that have been made in history that have gone before us. The other states that uh, have similar requirements, California, Illinois, New Jersey, and Florida. A portion of Vermont's infamous Huntington Gorge is about to fall under private control, a newly formed group calling itself the Huntington River Corporation has arranged to buy 18 acres of an area known as the Lower Gorge. 72 area residents have chipped in $500 each to buy the property. The corporation plans to make the area off limits to the general public, but only temporarily. And we're going to hold it for a year or two, and then in that time, the land trust or some other organization will raise the money to buy it from us. It's just that, that the land trust or another organization couldn't act quickly enough to just buy it now. The lower gorge is considered less dangerous than the upper gorge, where two people have died this year alone. During the past two decades, the gorge has claimed 17 lives. Health officials say some people just are not listening to the warnings about wild animals and rabies. In Franklin County, New York, a baby raccoon was found wearing a flea collar. Officials say that is a sure sign that someone was thinking of keeping the animal as a pet. And in Salem, New York, a 10-year-old boy is getting rabies shots after he was attacked by what authorities suspect was a rabid beaver. The animal carved an inch-deep wound in the boy's shoulder before his mother could dislodge it. Health officials say wild animals usually avoid human contact. If they don't, they're likely rabid. 
Most times wild animals, when they see us, flee. So if you see a wild animal that comes up and wants to rub against you, that is a strange behavior and that would be a concern. Trying to domesticate wild animals is also against the law. Only trained wildlife specialists are permitted to treat injured or abandoned wild animals. That's scary stuff. It is scary stuff. We really have to listen to the warnings. It makes sense. Tom Messner is standing by now with a look at the midweek weather. Hi, Tom. Boy, the weather has been interesting. I don't know if you've noticed. We have severe thunderstorm watches in effect for all of Vermont and all of northern New York. What's going on? We'll let you know next. In terms of retail value, a fireplace is rated number two. In terms of dollar value, a superior brand fireplace costs about half as much as a masonry built one. Not to mention they can go just about anywhere in your home. Green Mountain Fireplaces believes you don't have to sacrifice style and function to save money. Just bring us your plans and pick out the ready-built model you like. From initial design through complete installation, we're behind you every step of the way. Green Mountain Fireplaces, Susie Wilson Road, Essex, Vermont. It's the <laughs> to qualify for our special portfolio account, you must have turned 49 years old. At least two years in a row. Portfolio 50, a special banking relationship with people 50 and over. From the bank that's listening, Bank of Vermont. A lot of little touches go into every new Plymouth Neon. A very powerful 132 horsepower engine, a spacious cab forward interior, and a special chip resistant finish. And oh, one more thing, dual airbag protection. So it always practices safe driving. Say hello to Plymouth Neon. 89.75 for starters, 12.5, nicely equipped. Highly huggable, low price at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Weather tonight is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealer. Here we go again. Nasty storms. Oh, my gosh. The radar is getting a workout. It is just wild out there. We've got severe thunderstorm watches in effect again for all of Vermont and northern New York until 8 o'clock tonight. So not out of the woods, even if you're seeing the sunshine, and which it was <laughs> yeah, a little while ago. I want to show you a picture, a quick hi to everyone at Flanders Elementary School. We uh, took a little ride out there this morning, talked weather. It was a blast. It's part of their summer enrichment program, and they were talking about big thunderstorms in Malone this morning, and I could hear them in the distance from here, but some people got walloped pretty good. Let me show you what's going on right now. Things in the valley have really quieted down a little bit. It's 76 degrees in Plattsburgh right now. We've got 71 in Burlington, and both sides of the lake did see some rain. As a matter of fact, that rain total in Plattsburgh is a little old now where it's reading just a trace, and Burlington well up over half an inch. Did make it into the 80s today. All right, if you're going out on the big lake tonight, please be careful. There are watches in effect for thunderstorms, as you might imagine. South winds, 15 to 25 knots in those storms. Two to three feet waves. For tomorrow, west to northwest winds at about 10 knots, and the waves will not be nearly the problem. All right, here's your UV index for noon tomorrow. It's going to be a 6, and that will be moderate. Let me show you exactly what the heck is going on. Further north you go, this is kind of deja vu all over again. It's like yesterday, better off you are. Montreal, by the way, got hammered this morning. 79 degrees and a little bit of sunshine. That's kind of the case as you come on through the Champlain Valley and point west. Then you run into some rain, southern Addison County into Rutland County, including Rutland with some rain at 71 degrees and thunderstorms over toward Glens Falls, New York. Well, look what's going on. This stuff is just pumping, pumping, pumping. This looks a lot like yesterday, too. And you can see why we're not out of the woods. Back to the west, we've got still some circulation in southern parts of Ontario province over toward uh, Toronto, and it looks like this stuff might make it in a little bit later. So we do run the risk of those showers and thunderstorms really up till midnight, maybe 1 a.m. But here's your good news as we head toward tomorrow afternoon. We've got a front, the one working its way through now. Now, it's long gone. We're in great shape. We've got sunshine, but here's the bad news. We're going to find low pressure develop along this, get a little bit closer. Thursday, kind of going down the tubes and the weekend, not looking great at this point. We've got your five-day outlook. It's coming up right after this. Attention, Ford just announced the rock bottom low finance rate of 2.9% for 48 months on 94 Ford F-150 regular cabs. 
2.9% can mean over $3,400 in total savings, drastically reducing your monthly payments. Get 2.9% on a huge selection of F-150s equipped with driver's side airbag, rear anti-lock brakes, 24-hour roadside assistance, and much, much more. There may never be a better time to buy America's number one selling truck, but you better hurry, because 2.9% financing on F-150 definitely ends soon. Only at your New England and Northern New York Ford dealer. Again, we have severe thunderstorm watches in effect all of Vermont and northern New York. Scattered showers and thunderstorms till midnight, that possibility. Then some clearing. Lows not far from 60. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Maybe a few clouds early on. I had to throw that in. 77 to 82. Partly cloudy tomorrow night. 57 to 62. Thursday, eh, mostly cloudy. Chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially late in the day. 75 to 80 degrees. Boy, do I hate to show you guys this. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And to be honest with you, I know there's a lot of rain in that. Uh, I threw in some sunshine, and I'm not even sure we're going to see much of that. At this point, the weekend's not looking very good. Well, we're sort of due for that. I, yeah. hate, I hate to bring that up to you, but we are. It's true, but I hate to think about it. I know. <laughs> think of all of the new summer movie releases. Yeah, it's a good Thanks. idea. Yeah. Great time to go see them. Thanks, Tom. Plains and now with sports, some afternoon baseball. Yes, the Orioles in action today against the Indians. We'll take you to Camden Yards right after this. Your Vermont, New Hampshire, and upstate New York Pontiac dealers bring you a high excitement weekend. This Friday, Saturday, and Monday, get high-value, low-dollar Pontiacs, including $500 cash back and an additional $400 on any Grand Am in stock if you're under the age of 30. Grand Am, the best-selling compact coupe in America, offers airbag, anti-lock brakes, air conditioning, and more for thousands less than imports. Don't miss the high-value, low-dollar excitement of Grand Am this Friday, Saturday, and Monday at your Vermont, New Hampshire, and upstate New York Pontiac dealers. strangely attracted to it. I said, Vern, that is not a pizza. Introducing the Pizza Hut Bowly. Pizza toppings, cheese, and sauce in a mysteriously tasty crust. Now one bowly is $4.99. Bowly, it's out of this world. I believe it was brought here as a sign of peace. Oh. Bowly, reportedly seen in meaty, classic, and pepperoni mushroom varieties. Your Toyota dealer's July supply truck sale is busting out with an additional 200 new just-delivered Toyota trucks. See why Toyota trucks are the number one best-selling import truck for 15 consecutive years. Save on tough Toyota 4x4s with factory-to-dealer incentives and option savings. Save on dependable 4x2s and the big T100, just ranked best full-size pickup in initial quality. An additional 200 new Toyota trucks are waiting. The one you want is at your Toyota dealer's July supply truck sale now. Tonight's sports brought to you by Plattsburgh Motor Service, your automotive parts and paint specialists. Expos fans have reason to rejoice. This news gets better and better. It does indeed. In fact, uh, Expos fans coming out of the woodwork <laughs> these days. Expos <laughs> extending their winning streak to seven games last night by virtue of their win over Atlanta. They also increased their lead over Atlanta to two and a half games. So regardless of what happens tonight and tomorrow, the Spos will still get out of Atlanta with sole possession of first place. So look now at the game highlights. Braves getting on the board first. Ryan Klesko takes Pedro over the right field wall. A two-run job. Braves on top, two to nothing. Next batter, Terry Pendleton, and he takes Pedro along as well. Back-to-back -back home runs for the Braves, and they let it three to nothing. Spose down 4-1 in the sixth, and they get it going. It's Wilfredo Cordero. He had Corks' 15th home run of the year. Two-run tater, 4-3 Expos back in it. In the seventh, it's Moise Alou going down the right field line. That is good for one run to tie it at four. And then it's Floyd coming home for the go-ahead run. That makes it 5-4. Spose win it 6-4 thanks to Alou's two-run triple in the seventh inning. Tonight, the Spose and Braves go again at Fulton County Stadium. It'll be 13-5 Greg Maddox up against 7-2 Butch Henry of the Expos. Any team you face is going to hurt you if you don't make your pitches. You've got to make your pitches, and uh, it'll be the same against Atlanta. You know, all, all the guys that are going to pitch against Atlanta have got to, uh, have got to go out and, and make the pitches and, and get the outs, and if, if we do that, we'll win. 
All right, after going 10-1 and one on their recent road trip, the New York Yankees return to the city for a three-game series with the Red Sox. The Sox are currently 13 and a half games behind the first-place Bombers. The only team posing a threat these days, the Baltimore Orioles. They're five games back in the AL East. This afternoon, the O's and Engines at Camden Yards, and Rafael Palmero goes deep his 22nd of the year. A two-run job, O's up 3 to nothing In the fifth, Cal Ripken thinks he's got a tater as well. The deep drive to center is taken away by Kenny Lofton. However, Baltimore would win this game 10 to 4 anyway. They will play the second of two later on tonight. In the National League this afternoon, the Dodgers and Giants are playing in Los Angeles. Right now, the Giants lead 5 to nothing. Matt Williams has hit home run number 38. The Vermont Expos, 11-4, winners last night against Williamsport. Play again tonight at Centennial Field. Game time, 7.05. We'll have highlights for you at 11. Back with more right after this. Back in 1924, Walter Church Sr. began Plattsburgh Motor Service. His creed was to offer the largest inventory of quality auto parts and accessories at affordable prices. Since then, we've really expanded. Do you have a muffler for 56 CJ5 Jeep? Yes, we do. Do you have a water pump for a 78 Toyota Corolla? Yes, we have it. 70 years later, Plattsburgh Motor Service still has the best selection of auto parts and paints around at prices so low, you'll think they made a mistake. Plattsburgh Motor Service, quality auto parts stores spanning the North Country. At the Goodwill Games, the heptathlon today was won by Jackie Joyner Kersey. The long jump, uh, an American sweep. Mike Powell leading the way there. And in beach volleyball, the U.S. women taking gold and bronze. The U.S. men, silver and bronze. And finally, back to baseball, where tonight we're going to finish things off with a look at some of the finer plays from the last couple of days. That's a wrap. Thank you very much. Thanks. Coming right back. Question. Name the 94 automobile of the year. What comes nicely equipped for around 12.5 and is only at your Dodge dealer? Answer, Dodge Neon. Now go have some fun, or all the answers see your nearest Dodge dealer. Question. Name America's number one selling minivan. What minivan is around 16 with all this and is only at your Dodge dealer? Answer, Dodge Caravan. So go get the family or all the answers see your nearest Dodge dealer. Listen up, gentlemen. This is your mandatory phys ed uniform, white shirt, white shorts. If you are not in this uniform, you are not in class. Times have changed. There's a world of new colors. And with these new colors come new rules. Vivid rules. New Vivid Bleach with Color Care. Keeps today's most vibrant clothes looking newer, longer. Color Care. Only a new Ultra Vivid Bleach. New colors, new rules. It was in the 1930s. They were invited to a party on New Year's Eve in Burlington. And my father, around 11.30, approached my mother and said, Lorraine, we need to take a ride. They drove up Church Street. This is the part I love the best. At the sound of midnight, the bells in the Unitarian Church struck 12. And Mr. Preston put all the lights on in the store. My father turned to my mother and said, Lorraine, will you marry me? Hey, we know you're busy and can't worry about the best time to buy a car, but here's a clue. The Jeep and Eagle Clearance, on now. And featuring big savings on Jeep Grand Cherokees. Plus, great deals on Eagle Visions. And we're not shouting, but it's hard to beat the price on a 94 Eagle Talon. And this summit's looking sweet. So, take a time out. You could save a lot of money here. 
the Jeep and Eagle clearance. Worth looking into. Hey, we'll see you there. See your New England Jeep and Eagle dealer now. And finally tonight, a story about chasing dreams and living fantasies. For the tenth straight summer now, there is a so-called fantasy camp in Vermont designed to let amateurs play side-by-side -side with professionals. But we're not talking about athletes here. We're talking musicians. News 5's Matt Fear has more. One, two, mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Forgive us here, but the hills really are alive with, well, you know. This is Jazz Vermont. Doctors, lawyers, and retired corporate types who've come to the mountain to play with the best. Take alto sax man Todd Coward, a former Procter & Gamble exec who travels from Cincinnati every year to be a cool camper. Uh, you know, a lot of people go to fantasy camps like uh, baseball camps and uh, football camps, things like that, and a music camp is sort of like that. It's a place where you can sort of play out your fantasies. My focus is going to be on putting some space in between the ideas that I play. We'll do the same, same tempo again. A one, two, a one, two, mm, mm. <laughs> Tony Lada has played with the likes of Buddy Rich. Now he's teaching improvisation to 28 campers who can't get enough. Well, everybody leaves here uh, with a really up feeling about playing. Go back. If they aren't in bands already, they get in bands. If they are in bands, they take lessons. Uh, everybody's working on trying to improve their playing. The five-day camp culminates with a concert Thursday night. Memorable music for the ages. Matt Vierer, News 5, Bolton Valley. Great That's idea. Great. That is cool. Update. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect for our area till 8 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow, looking good. Thank you very much. Boy. Sox and Yankees at the stadium tonight. Highlights. Thank you very much. That'll do it for us. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. For all of us here at News 5, good night. Another bombing aimed at the Israelis in the heart of London as fears of new terrorism spread around the world. Tanks of water, the best hope for Rwanda refugees, but the crisis rages on. And a controversial custody ruling, a student mother loses a child. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. The terrible price of making peace as Israel negotiates an end to the long-running state of war with its Arab neighbors, suddenly it is once again the target of terrorists in far-off places. Last week, a Jewish cultural center in Argentina Today, a car bomb exploded outside the Israeli embassy in London. We have two reports tonight on the bombing and the likely suspects. NBC's Rick Davis begins in London. The bomb was in a car, now a hunk of twisted and charred metal. Israeli embassy windows were ripped out, floors collapsed inside. Fourteen people were taken to local hospitals, one severely injured. Some embassy workers were in shock, others described the moment of impact. I was on the telephone and suddenly there was an enormous bang and my ceiling just completely came down. Right afterwards we evacuated the people from the embassy to Hyde Park and we sent the people to their homes. The power of the explosion reached Kensington High Street around the corner from the embassy. Glass blew out, dust appeared, smoke rose and uh, people fled their offices immediately. I just. Things Scotland Yard says a policeman and Israeli security officer were near the suspiciously parked car. And were checking it out when it exploded. They are among the injured. A woman said to look Middle Eastern fled from the car just before the explosion. Given the appearance of the woman and given the location, the Israeli embassy, this is, uh, seems to be a return of Middle East terrorism to the streets of London. Terrorism experts say violence was predictable. Getting into this country is easy and terrorists blend into the big Middle Eastern community. Britain has become a large center for Islamic fundamentalists from everywhere. And uh, there is therefore no shortage of volunteers for either religious glory, for martyrdom, or for money. Embassy officials say last week they asked for tougher parking restrictions in this area. Tonight, police say security will be increased. Those tougher parking restrictions, more police, and more security cameras along Embassy Row. 
Rick Davis, NBC News, London. This is Ed Rabel at the Pentagon. Once again, Hezbollah, radical Shiite Muslims based in Lebanon and backed by Iran are getting the blame. Uh, no doubt in my mind that we face a wave of extreme Islamic radical terrorist uh, movements in the Arab Muslim countries. Today it was London that target the Israeli embassy. Just last week it was Buenos Aires, a Jewish center, at least 96 dead in that blast alone. Also last week, Panama, a commuter plane exploded in midair, killing 21, including 12 who were Jewish. And last month, officials in Thailand arrested this Iranian for attempting to drive a truck bomb into the Israeli embassy. U.S. counterterrorism officials tell NBC News they believe Hezbollah is responsible for the current wave of terror, and they're on increased alert for possible bombings here at home. I expect that we're going to have terrorism here coming out of our ears. In fact, State Department documents issued earlier this year say for the first time that Hezbollah has established active terrorist cells in North America. Also known as Islamic Jihad, the terrorist group claimed responsibility for the 1992 bombing of the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires, killing 29 people. But it's also known to have been involved in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine barracks in Beirut, the hijacking of TWA Flight 847 in 1985, the kidnapping of most Western hostages in Lebanon. What makes the group extremely dangerous, terrorism experts tell NBC News, is the almost unlimited funding and support from Iran. And its rhetoric is wholly anti-Western, anti-democratic, and anti-peace. And tonight, everywhere in the world, security agencies are on red alert for possible terrorist attacks. For their part, Israeli officials say they will take their vengeance when the time is right. Ed Rabel, NBC News, the Pentagon. Israeli Prime Minister Rabin has been in Washington this week signing and celebrating the new peace agreement with King Hussein of Jordan. And today at a joint news conference with President Clinton, all three condemned the terrorist attacks. It's an all-out war waged by these elements against the possibility of the solution of the Arab-Israeli conflict in all its parts. I did discuss the terrorism issue with President Assad in Geneva. I uh, have continued to press uh, with our friends and neighbors, our allies, uh, the importance of standing up against nations which support terrorism. Uh, trying to stem the expansion of terrorism is a major objective of the United States. Nothing irritates me more or is more painful to me than to witness and see acts and attitudes attributed to Islam that have nothing to do with Islam, my faith, and my religion. Now to Central Africa, to Zaire, where an international SOS has drawn rescuers from around the world, where the people, however, continue to die faster than mass graves can be prepared. As NBC's Rahima Ellis tells us tonight, clean water is the key. At Goma's airport today, the number of flights reached an all-time high. 45 planes landed, more than double the number just three days ago, but still only half of what's needed. Today's airlift carried tents, food, and medical supplies, and one plane carried Fire Chief Jack Horner. He saw the refugee horror on television and wanted to come to help. Yes, we can help these people. We're going to give them water. We Through the windshield of his fire truck that usually rides the streets of Calaveras, California, he saw refugees cluttering the streets of Goma, walking in search of water. So far, 20,000 refugees have died, most of them from cholera, a disease that spreads in dirty water. Medical researchers have now found the antibiotics used to treat the strain of cholera the refugees have are not effective. So the proper medicines will soon be airlifted from warehouses in the U.S. and other countries. The Mountain Fire Rescue Company brought in equipment to purify contaminated lake water to stop the cholera from spreading. We're from California. And uh, California has its share of disasters all the time. And people get used to helping one another, and that's what we're doing here. The four firefighters teamed up with dozens of American soldiers to filter the water from polluted Lake Kivu. The first order of business was setting up with water pumps, hydrants, and hoses. The U.S. Army water purification system will clean 1,200 gallons an hour, but the fire crew's equipment will clean five times that amount. 
The Milton Fire Rescue Equipment will pump out more than 3,000 gallons of purified water per hour. That's enough for more than 14,000 refugees each day. There are people who've been desperate without it. But 22-year-old Derek Brune wasn't prepared for the grim reality. Even from, you know, my wildest nightmares, I, I couldn't imagine living like this, and I, I really feel for the people who do have to live like this. It's, it's rough. Just a few yards away from where the firemen struggled to set up the water pump, refugees crowded around a muddy faucet, still filling their containers with contaminated water. This woman says her two children, her husband and her sister, died a few days ago from lack of food and water. She knows the water is bad, but she says she has no choice. Well, I sure hope we can give them clean water by first thing tomorrow morning, because it's really sad looking at them the way it is now. The firemen and the Army work late into the evening, anxious to meet their early morning deadline, when they hope to be able to start pumping clean water. And then three U.N. trucks will finally be able to take the precious cargo, clean water, to the waiting refugees. Rahima Ellis, NBC News, Goma, Zaire. More news from overseas tonight. A setback for Bosnia's fragile truce. Serbs said today that they would close the only road available to civilians in and out of Sarajevo. That move would cut off food to the city at a time when U.N. relief has been suspended now. When Nightly News continues here in a moment, student or parent, a judge says that a young Michigan woman may not be both. Also, children in danger from their own parents. How do you keep them out of harm's way? And capitalism for a new generation of Russians. It's not exactly child's play. I can't get anything that works better than Mycotin for my athlete's foot. But this great targeted spray gets more Mycotin into the places I need it most. Only Mycotin's got the targeted spray for a cure that gets in. What would happen if you took the relief of a liquid antacid and put it into a form you've never seen before? You'd get new Mylanta Soothing Lozenges. Liquid relief now in a lozenge. New Mylanta Soothing Lozenges. My doctor said Mylanta. S smells good! Rain Ann and Roach has a country fresh scent, so it's easier on you. Tough as ever on roaches. I know. Who sent flowers? Country Fresh Raid kills bugs dead. This summer, get away from it all. In the Seville SLS with the North Star system. A single upfront payment of $12,732 saves you $1,744. Reserve your own private world. The Cadillac Seville SLS. Before summer breezes by, see your Cadillac dealer. This month, we're creating the ultimate Red Lobster's Ultimate Feast. Luscious lobster with scampi, butterflied shrimp, and snow crab. All on one place. The ultimate feast. But only during July at Red Lobster. Miss Barclay! Conrad. Room 801. Once they were in love. In love with butter. But cholesterol closed the door on their dreams until... William. May I serve you? I can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter is the first spread flavored with real sweet cream buttermilk for a fresh butter taste, but without the cholesterol. Now nothing can disturb our love. I can't believe it's not butter. The taste you love without the cholesterol. In Washington, this was the first day of congressional hearings on Whitewater. That was the Clinton's Arkansas real estate investment backed by a failed savings and loan. The hearing today was heavy on partisan squabbling, Republicans crying abuse of power, Democrats saying it was all much ado about nothing. Here's NBC's Lisa Myers. After today, no one can accuse Democrats on the House Banking Committee of being hard-nosed investigators. In the um, so-called Whitewater Affair. The chairman made it clear he saw nothing to investigate. White House counsel Lloyd Cutler did admit, however, that mistakes were made in the White House involving contacts with Treasury officials investigating a failed Arkansas savings and loan. I found that there were too many people having too many discussions about too many sensitive matters. And I believe we did not meet as high a performance standard as we should have set for ourselves. Cutler specifically mentioned a meeting between his predecessor, Bernard Nussbaum, and Deputy Treasury Secretary Roger Altman, 
in which Altman was urged not to withdraw from the SNL case involving the Clintons. This discussion should not have taken place. Altman also was in hot water because of discrepancies between what he told a Senate committee in February and facts which later became known. Amid calls for Altman's resignation, Cutler offered a lukewarm endorsement. He has been a very effective Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, and I personally hope he continues in that job. Documents released today also contradict Treasury Secretary Lloyd Benson's claim that he was unaware of early contacts between his department and the White House. Republican Jim Leach predicted several surprises at these hearings. He said the issue is ethics. Whitewater is about the arrogance of power. It is a metaphor for privilege. Republicans and Democrats agree that at a minimum, these hearings are likely to embarrass some people very close to the president and further damage this administration's already tattered credibility. Lisa Myers, NBC News, the Capitol. To Michigan now, and a child custody decision that has shocked a great many people at issue here, whether a single mother should lose custody of her child because the mother is going to college. NBC's Don Fratangelo has this story. 19-year-old Jennifer Ireland is a full-time scholarship student at the University of Michigan. During classes, she leaves her three-year-old daughter, Miranda, in daycare. But a judge says there's no way Ireland can be both a good parent and student and has ordered Ireland to give up her child. I've worked so hard and so long to get here, and now it's being held against me. And I, I always thought going to the University of Michigan would be a benefit, not a fallback. It just, it blows my mind. <laughs> The child's father, Steve Smith, was awarded custody because, according to the judge, Smith won't place the child in the care of strangers. Smith lives with his parents, who plan to care for Miranda while he works and goes to school part-time. She isn't losing her daughter because she's bettering her education. She's losing her daughter because she can't provide stability. Smith never married Ireland, who became pregnant in high school. Child welfare advocates are troubled by the decision and worry it could penalize single parents who work or attend school. It sends out a message to mothers who rely on child daycare that they may be in jeopardy of losing custody of their children because they use child daycare. Judge Raymond Casson defended his decision and said it's not meant to be critical of the daycare system. Jennifer Ireland plans to appeal the decision, claiming it's a case of gender bias. During yesterday's emotional hearing, she raced out of the courtroom in tears when an opposing lawyer argued against her keeping the child during the appeal. The case has drawn protests from the National Organization for Women and bewilderment from others that the pursuit of an education could strip a parent of a child. Dawn Fratangelo, NBC News, reporting. In other news tonight, wildfires still are a big problem in the American West. Fourteen major fires now burning in seven states. That's including a fast-moving brush fire in Washington state. Overall, there are more than 6,000 firefighters battling these blazes. And in Simi Valley, California today, an explosion at Rockwell International's Rocketdyne plant, which makes rocket engines for NASA. Two people were killed, another severely boon, burned. The cause of the accident still is under investigation. In business news tonight, Boeing's second quarter profits, well, they sound like good news, $222 million, but that's less than half of the first quarter earnings. Boeing, which is the world's largest aerospace manufacturer, says that sales of commercial aircraft were off. Boeing was off almost a point today on Wall Street. The Dow itself was down just over six. Trading today was light for the second day in a row. When we come back here in a moment, children at risk, the danger, their parents. Why aren't you at college? Something wrong? No, I decided to come and see you. Michael, this is my son. Jeremy. My mother has mentioned you. Cassie. Well, we share a real passion for a certain coffee. <laughs> yeah, Taster's choice. Savor the. We've got the big butt raisins. <laughs> Cereal. How can something non-alcoholic taste this good, huh? Funny you should ask, Jim. Unlike some other NAs, Old Milwaukee starts with fully fermented beer and uses this centrotherm with its unique rotating evaporator system to carefully remove the alcohol. 
So full-bodied beer flavors never compromise? Exactly. That's the beauty of the Centrotherm. For a non-alcoholic brew that tastes like beer, it doesn't get any better than this. Who said that? The RF converter output of unit XLT735B is preset to VHF channel 3 prior to shipment. Wait. The RF converter output of unit XLT735B is preset to VHF channel 3 prior to shipment. But the RF converter output of unit XLT735B is preset to VHF channel 3 prior to shipment. Uh, Any questions? Mm. Radio Shack has over 25,000 people with simple answers to complicated questions. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Day four of the show. The magician is performing for the kids. I thought the dancers stole the show last night. I put on quite a show in aerobics this morning. I can see why Royal Caribbean has won so many awards. I can see it in John, our cabin steward, and Ted, our wine steward. Watching people with this much pride is quite a show in itself. You've got some Royal Caribbean coming. America close up tonight, keeping children out of harm's way. We begin a special series tonight. The stress of being a parent can be overwhelming at times, and that can turn kids into targets of rage. One solution, safe havens for children, giving parents a break before they do something they might regret. Here's NBC Sarah James. Need another paper, Dad? It's 6 a.m., and Reuben and Jason Pashon are delivering the Sunday paper in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Here's some husband, another one. They're a good team now, but on this paper...